this first step of uh, how to play Scarborough Fair. So um, this is a song by, uh, well it's an old traditional folk song actually, in 3-4 and it was made famous by uh, Simon and Garfunkel, it was in that film The Graduate and it's one of their biggest songs, it's got this legendary finger style picking pattern uh, on the recording you got that uh, part, which everyone learns at some point to play his fingerstyle. And then it's like some kind of twinkly uh, bits, um, uh, and then there's a bass and harmonies and stuff like that. So I, um, I wanted to use this song for quite a few reasons. Uh, the first one being that it's a, a fantastic fingerstyle exercise in itself. Uh, just a great example of how you can play good finger style. It's also in Dorian. That's another massive reason for why I wanted to uh, use this song. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice Dorian later on. We're gonna play the vocal melody, we're gonna modify the vocal melody or develop rather. Um, we're also going to um, we're gonna learn that uh, exact finger style part obviously as well. We're gonna transform that part into a picked part without the capo. So the original fingerstyle part is here and we think in A minor or A Dorian and then we take the capo off later on and we play uh, uh, using an open E minor. Um, so lots to learn here really and you might be thinking oh I don't really play much fingerstyle and this is really fast and you know this is not gonna work out for me and all these kind of things. 
and uh, you, you know join the club. I don't really play much finger style either, and uh, the reason I don't do that is because it's um, it's extremely difficult to make that work in the real world. As soon as someone else starts playing, it's uh, hard to kind of hear yourself. So what a lot of people do is they um, they use uh, nails to get a more sharp sound or they use like finger picks, you know, when you put them on your hand. I, I don't really like that. It has never worked for me. So I, I like the sound of the just the flesh of the finger uh, to the string. And I also like resting my hand like this. So I like all those things that you shouldn't be doing, basically. <laughs> You should have a floating technique and you should be a classical player, you know. I, I don't, it doesn't work for me at all that. Um, and because this song is so fast, it's, it's, it's easy to think that, oh, I'm just going to, you know, ignore this and uh, not worry about it. And, and I, I thought like that, I didn't actually record this for, for Spy Tunes. It was someone else who did and uh, I managed to get away with it in that way. And now that I'm, I'm doing this course, I felt that this song is really important. You know, it's such a legendary finger style thing so I had to get on with it and just learn it basically um, and the way I did that was that I broke it up into six different examples which covered all the different uh, parts that are used in this arrangement it's basically the same thing over and over you got the intro which is pretty much the same as the outro and then you got this verse that repeats five times um, so I managed to break it down into six examples, and that's what we're going to practice today. Uh, we're going to do that at a bunch of different tempos. So today we'll do it at 100 BPM and 110 BPM. And doing that on a loop will actually uh, make you able to play this. Uh, it worked for me, um, and I'm, as I said, I'm not really a, a big fingerstyle player. Uh, and just um, doing it methodically like this uh, worked out really well. I actually recorded this in one take, first take, one take, and I was like, oh my god, I can't believe it, I did it. And that's only because I broke it down into smaller chunks, practiced it at different tempos. So I really, I really proved to myself when I did this song that that is the way forward if you're going to learn something like this. Because it's so fast, it's about uh, doing it exactly the same way all the time. And making it m about muscle memory basically uh, so let's let's do that you'll learn lots from doing this it's 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 brilliant actually so let's let's just start with uh, the intro which is example one so we got uh, the whole thing here is uh, if you think of an a minus seven you move that up you get a chord that we call an a 13 sus four the reason we call it that is because that's what the intervals spell out. So you got the root there and the fifth there. That's the seven and that's the six. Now when you have the seven in a chord or a flat seven and you have a six, you have to call that a thirteen because it means it's extended up there. You can't call it a six. Doesn't really matter. Even though it's in the first octave there, you still have to call it a thirteen. And that's a sus four. So that's what the intervals tell you the chord is. And the pattern is, is instantly recognizable, isn't it? 